911, what's your emergency? My CO detector is going off and there is a really bad smell and I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Several Tulsans may not be alive right now if it wasn't for one of their neighbors. Eden Eklund woke up in a panic. I just can't believe this. A horrible incident that could have ended even worse. This could have resulted in multiple deaths. I usually don't do many story times on my channel, but the ones I have done usually aren't that serious. They're pretty sarcastic and I have a lot of humor in it. But 100%, this is a serious video and what I'm about to tell you is the true story of the time I should have died, could have died, almost died all of the above. I was very hesitant on making this video. I went back and forth on whether I should talk about this or not, but I feel like it is a story that needs to be heard. As you can see, I'm in a new house. I mentioned that in one of my uh, earlier videos. One of the reasons for moving was because of something traumatic that happened to me back in the apartment I was living in. Granted, Elise and I have been wanting to get a house together for a while now, but this whole situation just really expedited us getting a house. Let me just start all the way at the beginning and I will try my best to not make this story all over the place, so just bear with me. I might have to just like really collect my thoughts. So many things might be out of place, but like I said, I'll try my best to tell a very concise in order story so here we go <laughs> one more thing before i start so when i tell the story i'm going to be giving very specific details and in the moment it might seem very like irrelevant and unnecessary to you but trust me it it's crazy how all these details i'm going to be giving you connect. For those of you who don't know, I had been living in an apartment place with my younger sister Elise. In February, so that was about three or four months ago, my sister was going to be out of town for something and this was going to be during the week, so on a Monday or Tuesday. It was actually a Monday, Tuesday. This is pretty unusual for either of us to be out of town because if we are, we're usually together or if it's just one of us, it's usually during the weekend. So um, again, guys, the specific details, it doesn't make sense now, but just, like I said, bear with me. It'll make sense at the end, everything connects. So anyways, back to what I was saying. She was gonna be out of town and I was gonna be by myself in our apartment with our dog, Sunshine, who is a golden retriever, sweetest thing ever. I love her to death. So I'm glad that I wasn't being left alone. I was with uh, Sunshine at the time. So. Elise had left, this was like, I think, first, second week in February. She had left to go out of town and I was in my apartment alone and it was a Monday night. I work full time as a teacher, so I normally try to get to bed early. Sometimes that doesn't happen because I get distracted and start doing things. So this particular night, I decided to do laundry and it was about 11 o'clock and I was folding clothes in my room and I live right above a garage, so like my unit is above garage units. So my bedroom specifically is above a garage. I feel like I said garage so many times. I had heard the garage open and close, and this was like around I think 11 or 11.30 when I was folding laundry in my room, and at the time I didn't think about it. Now that I think about it, like that was obviously kind of weird because the person that I knew who lived below me was an older lady. Usually during the week, she was in her apartment early. She never like left or came back that late at night. Cause I guess, I mean, for me, 11 o'clock is pretty late at night. I should have been in bed sleeping cause I had to teach the next morning. I heard the garage open and close and I just didn't think anything of it. I finally finished folding my clothes and putting them away and um, at this time it was about midnight, so I got ready for bed and I decided to sleep in Elise's room. The reason why is because our dog Sunshine, she likes to sleep in Elise's bed. She usually sleeps with Elise whenever um, Elise is there. So I was like, you know what, 
I'll go ahead and sleep in Elisa's bed just because Sunshine will be chilling in there and I can sleep with her. And I made sure to okay it with Elisa. I was like, hey, is it okay if I sleep in your bed? And Elisa was totally fine with that, but only on one condition. And that is if I wore pants to bed. <laughs> And I know that seems so ridiculous guys. I don't think this is too much like TMI, but I like to sleep in like oversized big t-shirts with obviously like no pants on. I am more comfortable that way and I would just like to sleep in big shirts and that's how I usually sleep. And Elise knows this and she's aware and she's like, uh, yeah, no, you need to wear like shorts or pajama pants or something before you sleep in my bed. And I was like, yes, I'll do that. I mean, I've done it before, no worries. So. Anyways, again guys, specific detail, remember this. So I went ahead, I slapped on my Star Wars pajama pants and it was actually cold that night. I usually don't run the heat at night cause um, I like it a little bit cooler. So I threw on a sweatshirt, which also is unusual cause I usually don't sleep fully clothed with pants or a sweatshirt on, but it was a little bit chilly this night. So it was, winter season for us here in Oklahoma. Put on my Star Wars pajama pants, put on my sweatshirt, and went in bed around midnight. It had been about a few hours of me sleeping and around 3.30 a.m. in the morning, I woke up to this very odd alarm sound. And the reason why I say odd is because it's not one I had ever heard before. Mind you, I was in an apartment where I had never really heard any alarms go off. I know what a smoke detector sounds like, but this didn't sound like a smoke detector going off. So I was very confused, but that was like my initial thought whenever I was laying down in bed and I heard it, I like darted up. Cause guys, I am the lightest sleeper ever i like clearly heard this and i like got up and it's so funny sunshine like shot up right by me and was like looking around i'm like it's okay i just i hear something this is super odd i definitely knew of two smoke detectors in our apartment one was in elise's room and one was in my room there might have been one out in the kitchen or living area i heard this very close i was like okay i looked up the smoke detector in elise's room and it didn't look like it was going off i was like that's odd so I walked out of Lisa's room. The door was already open. That's another unusual thing of me sleeping at night. I always sleep with the door closed. It was open this night because I was like, if sunshine needs to go out and you know, get a drink of water or whatever, I'll leave it open. So anyways, I walk out after getting out of bed, I walk out into the living room and I start to smell this very weird smell. I can't even describe the smell, but it will forever be in my head. The best way I can describe of what it smelled like was like burning gas. I was very confused because I was like, okay, if there's a fire going on and the smoke detector is going off, this, this doesn't smell like a fire smoke situation. It smells like someone is like burning something, almost like a hair salon. I was very confused. I went ahead and went to my room, which is right across from Elise's room. I had closed the door. I don't know why, but probably because it's habit. So I opened my bedroom door to look at the smoke detector to see if that's where I was hearing the sound. And immediately when I opened my door, it was just this wall of a just awful smell hit me. And it was that burning smell that I, like had smelled previously, but it was just like a thousand times worse. I thought I was gonna pass out. I felt nauseous. I was like, what in the world? And I quickly looked up at my smoke detector and I realized it wasn't it. And I like immediately backed out of the room because I was like, I think I'm going to pass out right now. Immediately when I stepped back from my room, I turned towards the kitchen because in this moment, I knew something's not right. I feel like most in normal situations, if I would have heard an alarm, I probably would just be like, I'll just, I'll deal with it in the morning. It's probably just something, a battery's out or something's going off that's like irrelevant because it wasn't that loud. It didn't seem that serious. There was just something in my gut. I was like, something is wrong. And this was when I had walked out into the living room, but I immediately knew something was very terribly wrong whenever I walked in my room, opened the door and that smell hit me. I was like, something is not right. Even though it seems like everything's fine, there's nothing burning, there's nothing on. Like I didn't leave anything on in the kitchen. Like I said, I turned and faced the kitchen and I heard the alarm that I had heard going off. I was like, there's no more smoke detectors of where this sound is coming from. So where is it coming from? And then I realized right across from the kitchen, we have a CO detector, which is a carbon monoxide detector. I heard it and saw it was blinking. It was going off and I'm like, oh no, oh no, this is bad. Growing up, my parents had like 
told me about carbon monoxide it is the silent killer because you can't smell it so then i was more confused because i was like i smell a smell the carbon monoxide detector is going off but you can't smell carbon monoxide so what in the world is happening right so at this point i was confused i probably had lost a million brain cells because of whatever i smell in my room i felt like i was gonna pass out so i know i've been telling this whole bit like for a few minutes now but all of this stuff that happened was, it literally happened so fast, probably in 30 seconds it happened. Woke up, checked smoke detector, checked my room, checked the carbon monoxide detector, and in that moment I knew something's wrong, I need to get out of here. So I went ahead, grabbed my winter coat, got on my shoes, quickly got sunshine, and I ran outside. We live on the second level, um, obviously, because there's a garage below me and that's above the garage. So we live on the second level, so I ran down the stairs, sat on the curb. I immediately called 911 because I knew that something's happening in my apartment and I couldn't explain what. I know I seem all over the place. This is literally how I was. <laughs> at 3 30 in the morning i'm like what is happening like i can't think straight right now i feel like i'm going to vomit and pass out i called 911 and right when i called them the operator answered and was like 911 what's your emergency and i just told him that there is a weird smell in my apartment my carbon monoxide detector is going off and i think people need to get here and check it out because I don't know what's happening and I don't feel very well. I feel nauseous. I feel like death. They sent a fire truck out. A few firefighters got out and I told them my apartment's up there. That's literally all I said. I just pointed and went up there and they didn't even ask me any questions. They just nonchalantly went up to my apartment. They were up there for about 30 seconds, I think. And then they came back down and they were like, yeah, there's there's something in there, there's a smell. And I'm like, well, no, duh, there's a smell. They grab these, uh, I don't even know, guys. I, I don't know the terminology, but they grab something that would detect uh, this, probably what the smell was, or if it was carbon monoxide, because they noticed that the CO detector was going off. So they went up, they were up there for about, I think a minute, and they, they came back down, the look on their faces, they were wide-eyed looking at me kind of like just glazed over i was like so what what's what's the deal what's wrong with the, my apartment what's the smell and they're like uh we are calling hazmat out here asap your apartment definitely has uh, carbon monoxide in it i was like okay awesome well what do you want me to do in the meantime? They offered me to sit in their fire truck because like I said, it was below freezing out. I went in the fire truck and at this time, guys, I was, I, I didn't document much. I, I took just a few pictures just because I was texting my mom, letting her know what was happening because I had called her previously going, hey, like something's happening with my apartment. I just want to let you know I'm okay. I'll show you the one picture. This is actually the picture when the first fire truck showed up. This is the only thing that I put on social media because I was trying to find some humor in um, something traumatic that happened to me. So um, for those of you who follow me on Twitter, you probably know a little bit um, about this story, I guess not in detail. I had tweeted that um, I had been exposed to carbon monoxide and that um, I was texting my mom and that this was her response to uh, my picture and the whole situation that was happening. Anyways, back to the story. Like I said, I didn't document much because I just, my brain wasn't functioning and this was not something I wanted to like videotape everything and be like, oh, you know. So uh, I did take a picture of Sunshine because um, I was waiting in the fire truck because it was freezing out and Sunshine was being a baby and wouldn't jump in the fire truck with me, which I understand. She's probably terrified, poor baby. I felt bad for her. That obviously didn't work out because I had to keep the door open with her on the leash and me sitting in the fire truck. I was like, well, I this is just like, it's just easier if I stand outside the fire truck with Sunshine. So I didn't stay in the fire truck. I went ahead and just like stayed outside, which honestly was fine because I wanted to see all what was going on. So at this time, after I had got, gotten out of the uh, fire truck, hazmat had showed up. I think a couple different hazmats showed up in another fire truck. So at this point, a lot of people were uh, accumulating, right? So hazmat went up and they had even bigger machines probably to detect the carbon monoxide. So they went up to my apartment and then they came back down 
and as they were coming back down i had noticed that other residents were coming down i was like oh man like why are other residents coming out it's like at this point it was like i think four in the morning i was talking to some of the neighbors and they're like no like they're evacuating the whole apartment unit and i was like oh wow like it's that serious where they're evacuating everyone they were like just banging on doors getting people out one of the firefighters came up to me and he patted me on the back. I was like, wait, what was that for? And he's like, hey, you might have just saved yourself and all these people. If that young lady that lived above that garage had not called, this could have resulted in multiple deaths. In that moment, I guess I didn't realize how serious this was because I think I was just like, dazed and confused of this whole situation what was happening i was like why why is this happening to me at like 3 30 in the morning there were several of them who came up pat me on back going hey like good job for calling 911 we're evacuating everyone just sit tight good job for what you did you you had a good response and i was like okay thank you <laughs> what's happening so just to recap they evacuated the whole building. All of us residents were out there in the freezing cold. Some had gone and sat in their cars, um, but others were like just waiting on the curb. The firefighters in Hazmat, what they were doing was they were trying to figure out where the carbon monoxide was coming from. They were trying to like see where the strongest levels of CO was. They figured out that the CO levels were very high in one of the garages. It started to click with me. I was like, okay, there's probably a car running in a closed garage, which is causing this carbon monoxide buildup. Then I had heard from some of the firefighters, I overheard them talking that they were banging on one of the doors, which was the door to that garage and no one was answering and no one had evacuated that unit. You could probably come to a conclusion or speculate that this said person was probably in their car with it running with the garage closed. Whether it was intentional or not, we didn't know at that time. They were just trying to get the door down. They couldn't get through the garage. So they were just like literally taking the jaws of life and just like smashing the crud out of that door, getting through it. All of us residents were just like, what is this? happening i th feel like that was a lot <laughs> that was like the only thought going in my head like what is happening what is happening what is life what am i doing here just to kind of shorten it they finally got it open sadly there was uh the older lady in her car dead with uh the car running in her garage i think we were just all in shock it started becoming real because they started putting up that crime tape the yellow caution tape like roping it off where our apartment was and this was about i think like five or six o'clock i think it was like six o'clock it took them a couple hours to get in there which is insane it took them that long because i think they were just evacuating the whole building trying to figure out where it was coming from by six o'clock they were roping things off they were kind of like evacuating us more to the other side of the apartment at this point the news people were there of course they're on it like that so there was like four or five different stations i guess it's kind of cool i was all over the news uh i did like four or five interviews with different news stations i like to hashtag stay humble but they were calling me a hero sammy jensen spoke with a woman who's now being called a hero the whole thing was crazy after the interviews, they had moved some fire trucks in the way, and at that point, the, the policemen were there. There's so many people there. It was insane how many policemen, firefighters, news people were there with all of us residents outside. Like I said, they had moved a fire truck in the way so they could uh, carry out the body. After they had removed the body from the apartment place, Hazmat went in with these huge ventilator things. Again, I don't know the correct terminology behind all the machines they use. What they were doing was they were starting to vent out or suck out the carbon monoxide and get the levels back to normal so us residents could safely go back back in. I had found out when I was doing one of my interviews that I, I personally didn't know. I actually found out because the person who was interviewing me told me that the carbon monoxide level was over 500 ppm in my apartment. If you don't know what 500 ppm means, basically there's different levels of CO and usually they evacuate buildings. If the ppm is in the teens the teens guys so like 13 14 15 ppm my apartment place was at 500 
PPN. How I'm still alive, I do not know. Just because I was curious like how dangerous 500 PPM is, which I mean in my head I figured it was obviously dangerous because they evacuate buildings when it's just in the teens. If you're exposed to carbon monoxide at 500 PPM, it says healthy adults will have nausea, dizziness, I definitely had that, convulsions, not so much probably because I quickly got out of my apartment, but it said all that will happen within 45 minutes. And I think what uh, that means is if you are exposed to it, just like sitting in the carbon monoxide for 45 minutes, if you're still exposed to that carbon monoxide, you're unconscious within two hours, then death. After reading that, I realized if I was just in my apartment, even 30 more seconds to a minute, I don't know, even, maybe even shorter time than that. It could have just taken me in my sleep and I could be dead right now. I don't take that lightly. I'm not trying to make a joke out of this like, oh, I could have been dead. It's scary to think about. Going back to the story, uh, they had finally gotten out all the CO and gotten the levels back to normal where it was safe for us residents to go back in. They went ahead and let us go back into um, our apartment around 7 30 in the morning things are starting to die down the news people were starting to leave and firefighters and policemen were starting to leave just a few were left there we went back into our apartments and <laughs> i had been out in the cold with sunshine for like four hours so i was just like freezing i felt sick to my stomach even though it was safe to be in there and breathe the air that i was breathing it still smell like that gas smell probably because it was just gonna be lingering there for a while I don't know I quickly called Elise told her what happened she was freaked out and then I called my parents and uh, they lived just an hour away from the apartment place I was living in so I went ahead and packed up some things got sunshine and I drove to where my parents were let's just say I just went through trauma I I felt sick and I needed someone mon monitoring me. So my parents were like, come come up, stay with us for the day so you know we can watch you because when you're exposed to high levels of CO, it's, it's important to monitor the person. You just wanna make sure their vitals are okay and that that person doesn't fall asleep. So my parents just wanna make sure I wasn't gonna fall asleep or you know, pass out or whatever. So I quickly drove up to see them. They took care of me for the rest of the day. So thank you mom and dad for that. That's pretty much my whole story of the time I almost died, but I'm not quite done yet because I wanna talk about the specific details I gave you and how everything connects and just the aftermath of it and how I'm doing now. After I stayed with my parents, I went back to the apartment place because Elise got back and we made sure to kind of air out the smell and get it smelling a little bit better. We Febreze the place. First and foremost, this is an event in my life I will never forget. I've never experienced something like this where I almost died. This is something I'm mentally gonna have to live with for the rest of my life, but I mean, I am super grateful that I woke up and I heard the CO detector going off. I know that many of you guys who are watching, y'all come from different backgrounds, different uh, religions, different faith. I'm here to say I 100% believe that the Lord saved me and because of him, I am here today talking to you guys and telling this story and to talk about all the things that connect. He obviously knows everything ahead of time, what's gonna happen with our lives. He literally planned out every detail down to me wearing my pajama Star Wars pants, guys. So listen to this. God was not finished with me yet, y'all. He obviously was like, Eden, this is not your time. So even with Elise being out of town, Guys, if Elise was not out of town, I know this is really dramatic to say, but it's true. I would have been sleeping in my room with the door closed with the situation I lived through happening and the carbon monoxide would have taken me, guys, because by the time the carbon monoxide reached the detector, it was so bad in my room and that kind of terrifies Elise. So she's super grateful that the way things were planned out, that was like a God thing, that she was out of town, that I was sleeping in her room, that I even had like, pants and a sweatshirt on because I know that sounds super like dumb. So what, can you just gone pants on? No, I would have had to go in my room, go in my closet, put pants on, put a sweatshirt on. And at that point I probably would have been passed out on the ground dead. So the fact that I was fully clothed 
and that I was sleeping in Elise's room with the door open where I could hear the carbon monoxide detector. That is so unusual. I said that before at the beginning of the story. That is literally so unusual. That never, I never do that. I never sleep from head to toe fully clothed. I never sleep with the door open. I never sleep in Elise's room. She's never gone. Even like my, my winter coat was out. I never had my winter coat out. I never had my winter boots out. They were just out. I left them out that night for no reason. No said reason. I have no idea. It's crazy how everything connected and everything happened for a reason. Um, if you don't know me, I'm a very strong believer on things happen for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. God had everything happen like this for a reason. And I'm overwhelmed by the thought that I looked death in the face when I opened my dumb bedroom door and that carbon monoxide hit me. I was like, not today, Felicia, <laughs> not today. And I ran out of the apartment. It's just cool that God saved me. He used the carbon monoxide dete detector to wake me up and was like, Eden, it is not your time. I'm not finished with you yet. So get your rear end up and get out of the apartment. Cause I have a purpose for you, you have a life to live. Any one of us can be taken at any time, which, you know, can be a scary thought, but it's all in God's hands. And I am super grateful to be alive today talking to you all. The last thing I wanted to talk about before I end this video is about carbon monoxide detectors. This might seem like a super minor thing right now in with what's happening in the world today with COVID and other sad and tragic things that are happening. If you have the time, please, 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 if you are a child living at home with your parents, tell your parents. I wanna make you aware, if you're an adult watching this, guys, carbon monoxide detectors could save your life. Growing up, my parents always had a CO detector in our house. I always thought it was dumb. I'm like, when are we ever gonna be exposed to carbon monoxide? Even my parents, like telling them, they even thought, when they had it, they're like, does this thing even work? It's just something you have in your house. It's like, you don't think about it. I can guarantee you if I did not have a carbon monoxide detector in my apartment building and that thing didn't go off, don't mean to be dramatic, but me along with several other people would not be here right now. In saying that, I am living proof that y'all, if you don't have a CO detector in your house right now, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, wherever, you can have several if you want in your house, go out and get one right now. I don't think they're that expensive. I think it's super important to have, even though you may be like, oh, but I'll be fine. You know, I'm probably never gonna be exposed to carbon monoxide. That is exactly what I thought. I never thought something like this would happen to me. But yet here I am telling you this story. If you didn't get anything out of this whole story, listen now, <laughs> go buy a CO detector because it could save you. It's better to be safe than sorry. I think it's just one of those things, kind of like a smoke detector. It's just an important household thing or an apartment thing that you should have wherever you're living. That is a lesson learned in this. And also to end on just a good note, guys, just appreciate life appreciate every breath you breathe because you don't know when your last day on earth is gonna be live life to the fullest be kind be joyful love one another and i know there's a lot of hurt and suffering going on in the world today and i'm here to tell you guys there is hope like i said before be kind love 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 and live life to the fullest. That's all I have for you. I thank you so much for watching this video. It would mean a lot to me if you gave it a thumbs up and uh, feel free to leave a comment below. If anything that's on your mind, guys, I love reading through your comments and just seeing what you have to say. If you're watching this part right now, guys, really thank you for watching the whole thing. Thank you for bearing with me. I know that story was all over the place, but I really appreciate you all listening to my story. I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to be kind to one another and love each other and just stay safe out there. Bye, guys. Bye.